Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, a lot of stuff to go over, so let's jump right in. So first up, CoinMarketCap's Earn platform offers $160,000 in band to answer crypto quizzes. So this is right online with Coinbase's Earn, so I cannot wait to check this out and get some free money. Also, Trump's proposed capital gains tax cut could boost crypto profits, but there are a lot of caveats and pitfalls, and we're going to go over all of them. And I don't know about you, but taxes scare me to death. So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing to avoid or minimize a ton of taxes. Well, before we get into that, let's take a look at the market. So this is actually my second video of the day. It is August 14th. It is almost 6 p.m. Texas time. And I'm doing this because I have my grandson's birthday tomorrow. And uh, I can guarantee I will not be doing another video tomorrow. So let's see what's going on tonight. So Bitcoin is almost at 11.8, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, 24 hours, 0.3%. I will take it. Ethereum, I think it's going to hit 450. Uh, this is just a gut feeling. No TA, nothing else. So we'll see if I'm right. XRP, 30 cents. Watch out. Just kidding. It is up 3%. So hey, good for XRP. Tether still tether though. Uh, Chainlink, still down a little bit, but uh, might actually hit that $17. Bitcoin Cash, sure. Cardano down a little bit. Bitcoin SV, whatever. And uh, nothing really has really changed too much. Tron, though, I got to tip my hat. If you have held Tron for this long, I used to own Tron. Uh, congratulations, because, you know, it just took a beating for the longest time. Still in the top 20 and, and up 12% today. So uh, fantastic. Good for you. All right, let's just break into the articles. So first up, this looks pretty cool. Coin Market Cap's Earn platform offers a lot of money in Band to answer a crypto quiz. If you're not familiar with Band, Band is another oracle, just like Chainlink. Uh, it has a uh, lower market cap and it has less circulating supply, and it looks promising. But uh, I don't know how far it is. But look, anything that I can get for free, hey, why not? I'll do it. So if you just go over to uh, Coin Market Cap, which I got to tell you, I haven't been really a big fan of. I use Coin Gecko all the time, and the reason I use that. Uh, is because coin market cap has was actually bought out by binance there's a lot of different um, sometimes funny things going on with it i mean that's just uh, the things that i have heard and read i don't know for sure but uh just to keep it even steven i just use uh, coin gecko but whatever but hey if they're gonna give me uh, ten dollars in band hey i'm gonna take it so how does this work well let's figure it out so you're gonna go to coin market cap clicks here says start earning sure and if you're not aware coinbase has the exact same thing when you where you can earn crypto and you can earn up to like 160 bucks or something like that now it's all different hey look they got a new one they got kyber up i haven't done that one yet i might have to do that and uh so binance is right on its heels which is pretty interesting I'm, I'm, i shouldn't say binance excuse me uh coin market cap is right on its heels and it's interesting because uh coinbase just dropped out of the uh, congressional group lobbying group where they were a part of that and uh binance us came in and they're like nope and they just <laughs> withdrew so uh, a little maybe a little bad blood but uh, that's the cheese man what are you gonna do so coin market cap uh Learn crypto, earn crypto. I like that. Let's get started. And it goes here, earn band. What else they got? Nothing right now, but I guarantee if Coinbase is doing something, so is CoinMarketCap slash Binance. So click on earn band. We're going to get started. And it's the, oh my God, it's the same thing as uh, Coinbase. They didn't even try to, try, they didn't even try to hide it that they were going to do something different. So you just watch the video and then it'll give you some, uh, some free band. So I will do that later. I'm not going to do it right now. Joe, just so you know, Coin market cap, sign up, get some free band. That's it. Next story. So Trump's proposed capital gains tax cut could boost crypto profits. And I got to tell you, this goes pretty deep. It's going to get into the capital gains tax, but also it's going to get into uh, potential taxing of staking, which I think is going to be a horrendous situation. And I've actually called in some experts on this one uh, because I needed uh, the best information I could get. So let's, let's jump in. In a news conference at the White House earlier this week, Trump said that his administration was very seriously considering a capital gains tax cut. He says, we're looking at also considering a capital gains tax cut, which could create a lot more jobs. So two things. First of all, I don't see how you can keep cutting taxes and print money like it's going out of style. I just don't know how those two things work. And uh, of course, sure, it can create jobs, I guess, if we can have you know small businesses actually open up and not close down. But uh, that's just what I see. Second of all, you gotta understand, 
Uh, this is an election year. We're like three months away in the United States uh, of choosing a our president. So you better believe uh, the incumbent is going to pull out all the stops. So that's why those stimulus checks he tried to pass as an executive order. And that's why he's also giving more tax cuts because everybody likes free, right? Or reduced. So we'll see if that actually goes through. But there's a lot of pitfalls. Uh, the long-term capital gains rate, if you don't know, is 20%. And that's primarily governed by Congress. So here's the thing. If he has to go through Congress to get that done, uh, the Congress is controlled by the Democrats. If you're outside the United States, it's just we have two party system, Republicans and Democrats. And uh, uh, Donald Trump is a Republican. So good luck getting that through Congress. But here's the current state of US crypto tax. And again, I, I'm not a very political person. It's just I cover these stories because it's going to pay dividends for us later on as far as cryptocurrency digital asset holders. But the problem here is taxes, crypto taxes, because the IRS is just getting their feet wet and they're trying to figure it all out. But uh, taxation in the U.S. is a minefield. Uh, if you had to pay taxes, you know. Americans are required to report gains and losses on each cryptocurrency transaction or when they earn cryptocurrency via staking, whether or not they have made a profit. And I read this, I'm like, I don't think that's true. Um, so, I mean, two questions. Well, first was like, why do we have to report this stuff? I don't understand, uh, especially like staking. So I actually reached out, out to Sheehan Chandrasekara. And I and he is a he is a CPA. He is a cryptocurrency uh, specific one, head of tech strategy at Coin Tracker, and also works uh, or is a writer for Forbes Crypto. And I've asked him questions in the past, very, uh, you know, open guy, he's available, very nice. So I just said, hey, Sheehan, I'm doing a segment on Trump. And there's this thing that I don't understand where I, where the article states, Americans are required to report gains and losses on each cryptocurrency transaction or when they own crypto via staking, whether or not they have made a profit. And I asked him, is that really correct? And he says, he goes, the staking part is open to interpretation. I spoke about this on Coindesk a couple of weeks ago. He said venture capitalists have heavily invested in staking. They are trying to make staking taxable only when they sell the tokens. Because right now, it's when you earn it, which would be a huge problem. I mean, just enormous. So he directed me to this article that he had co-wrote co-authored and i read the whole thing it gets to this is where it gets to the meat and potatoes he says the irs has yet to say how or when staking rewards should be taxed technically speaking staking income is similar to rental income this is because cryptos are treated as property income you get after lending property is rental income by default and this is where it gets interesting However, staking income could can also be treated as interest because rewards might look like interest payments Though he said it would have to be fiat money to apply with case law. So really, it's it's all in the interpretation. And the big thing is how is the IRS actually going to do it? We don't know for sure right now. But uh, if history is any teacher, uh, the IRS likes to throw a big monkey wrench into the whole operation. So uh, that's what we got. So moving on, IRS also states that wages paid to employees using crypto are subject to federal income tax withholding and payroll taxes. So they went my sweet idea. I can't do that. Uh, the IRS is getting much smarter at tracking cryptos as staking rewards gather momentum. Tax authorities in the U.S. are keeping up with the game. And then this is what scares me right here. The impending introduction of staking on Ethereum 2 will be a capital gains nightmare for stakers as recipients and i'm like oh my god we just i just got done filing my taxes and i use cryptotrader.tax and those are the guys that i trust you can find the link in the description uh for every one of my videos but i had to i just reached out to david and uh, david's one of the heads of, of crypto trader and i'm like hey if this happens what what can be done or what are you guys doing about it because i mean if i have to if i have to record every single transaction especially for all this different staking i'm gonna lose my mind so uh Let's just hear what Dave has to say. Right. So everybody, so welcome back uh, to the office. So that last thing that we just talked about, the, the impending introduction of staking on Ethereum 2 will be a capital gains nightmare uh, for stakers recipients. And this is going to be a nightmare for everybody, including myself. So I don't have the know-how as far as like what could potentially happen, especially in the uh, uh, capital gains department and taxes. So I reached out to David from CryptoTrader.tax and I asked him the question, because it's if it concerns me, it's probably going to concern you. So, David, that's our question for today. Uh, what do you got for us? And what are you guys seeing? And what have you guys planned for in the future for this? 
Yeah, so staking protocols, it's not new, right? It's taken the Ethereum team a long time to roll out what they have set out to do a number of years ago. Um, but you're exactly right. Like as soon as they switch to proof of stake, anytime you're receiving staking rewards, that's treated as an income event. So you realize the fair market value of that staking reward when you receive it, right? And that's treated as a form of income. It's recognized on your taxes. Um, so in terms of what we're doing, Right as we see the Ethereum ecosystem evolve, um, we're our team's working on parsing in the entire Ethereum Ethereum blockchain. So as a user of CryptoTrader.tax, simply plug in your Ethereum wallet that you're receiving your staking rewards at, and we'll be able to parse in those as incoming transactions, and we'll be able to mark the U.S. fair market value or whatever your home fiat currently is. Um, so a lot of work, but you know we're well on our way to be able to supporting that type of functionality. Gotcha. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool because you guys save me a lot of time for my taxes. So thanks. I really appreciate that. I don't have enough time in the, in the day. Yeah. So what was great about it is that it just pulled in all my data from, yeah. I was using uh, uh, Coinbase. I had something from Binance. Huobi sucks, but I mean, that's not your fault. Huobi just wouldn't give me the information, whatever. But uh, so for, for this same type of thing, are we going to do, it's, is it going to be able just to be pulled in automatically or are we going to, have to like download some kind of like CSV file and then stick it in there? Or how's it going to work? So, so it's, it depends on how your wallet is set up. Okay. If okay. you're um, s receiving staking wards, like right on, right to your Coinbase wallet, right, which is an option, or if you have a hardware wallet, that is where you receive them. Um, it'll depend if you're going straight to like uh, a custodial exchange like Coinbase, it's still going to be, you just plug in your Coinbase account, we can pull in those deposits, okay? Um, but if you have a hardware wallet or some other wallet, you can just literally put in your Ethereum address and we'll be able to pull in everything that we saw come from the blockchain on that. So it really depends whether um, you know, you're using a custodial service like Coinbase or if you're you know, non-custodial, um, if that kind of makes sense. That makes sense. So, so the big thing is just have your Ethereum address, plug okay. it in, you pull the data and everything's right there. Exactly. Yes. It. It's going to be, it's going to be slick. We're excited to roll it out. We'll see, man. I'm, I'm excited. All right. I don't want to keep here. So thanks so much for answering yeah. that big question. No, thank you for having me on. Take care. Right. Okay. And I got to tell you, uh, I like a company that is proactive rather than reactive. Take note Coinbase. That's how it's done. So if you, if you see something coming on the horizon, you get in front of it before it gets in front of you. And uh, I think everything will work out. So uh, we'll see how it all goes. But uh, thanks, David, for answering that question because I had no answer. To finish this up, it says, if Donald Trump manages to push through his proposal, capital gains tax cut, it will at least offer the opportunity to keep at least a little more of the gains after all the record recording keeping, record keeping, and paperwork has been uh, completed. And this is what I wrote. I said, you know, this is concerning, especially with all this government interference. Um, my worry is that taxes might go out of control. And I got to tell you, just if they do a capital gains uh, cut, so it might go from 20 to 18 or from 15 to 13 or whatever else, you still got to pay a lot of taxes. I mean, just think about that. Think of think of where cryptocurrencies and digital assets were five years ago, if you had invested five years ago and where they are now. So even if you're paying, I mean, let's just lowball it, 10%, 10% of everything that, that, that you made, because you, you, know, you have to, uh, where are you going to be? So... That's why I put together this little explainer. So remember this. It's not how much you make. It's how much you keep. And taxes are the number one reason why you'll lose a ton. But there's a way around this. First of all, uh, taxes suck. I think even the Bitcoin maximalists and the XRP army can all agree on one thing, and that is that taxes are awful. So here's a question before we start. Question one is, would you rather pay a 20% tax on $180,000 or a 15% tax on $2 million? And number two is, do you think you'll live past 60 years old? Now, me personally, I think I made it this far, so why not? It's not without, it's not outside the realm of possibility that I can make it that far. So let's start with the average viewer of this channel. Let's go with a person who is about 35 years old. That's pretty much somebody who's in the middle. Now, it's just an average. You might be older or younger, but this is just an example. And according to the U.S. Census Bureau and the Social Security Administration, people will live on average somewhere around 82 years old. Uh, that's males, females, white, black, Latino, whatever. Men live a little bit shorter lives. Women live a little bit longer. Uh, so around 82. But let's say you retire at 65 
So you got about 20 years to go until you kick the bucket. I mean, well, it's actually 17, but let's just round up to keep things simple. Again, you might live longer or shorter than this. I'm not Nostradamus. Let's just go with the average. So obviously, the earlier you retire, the more money you might need so you don't run out. It really all depends on how long you want to work. So that means that if you're around 35 years old, you've got 30 years to save up for retirement. Now, it may sound far away, but let me tell you right now, it is not. And I put this little uh, hashtag OK Boomer as a reminder because I was in your shoes. If you're 20 years old, at some point I was in your shoes and someone told me a long time ago about compound interest and retirement. And I thought, yeah, 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 sure. I'll get to that. And I didn't. And here I am playing catch up, talking to you about these things. So again, it's not about what you make, it's about what you keep. And one of the biggest obstacles you and I are going to face is the tax man. Now I know there's some libertarians right now saying, hey, taxation is theft. Well, uh, that's what these people said and it didn't work out too hot for them. You got Willie, Wesley, Martha, and even Al Capone got pinched for tax evasion. So good luck doing better than these guys. And uh, here's a little trivia. Uh, which one of these four did not serve jail time? Because three did, federal jail time. Uh, the only one that didn't was actually Willie. And the way he did it was he made a tape and paid the uh, IRS back millions of dollars. So again, uh, good luck dodging the IRS. Now, have you ever signed up with an exchange uh, done any kind of KYC, know your customer, a AML, anti-money laundering, or submitted a photo ID or passport or social security number to any exchange or wallet. Because if you did any of those, chances are the government knows you have crypto and this question on your 1040 for taxes should have been answered yes. Now look, I'm not here to calm down anyone, but I've been through an IRS audit and it is no fun. So trust me when I say uh, the IRS knows, but stay with me because I'm going to show you the smart way to do things and how to massively reduce your taxes so you can keep way more of what you make instead of giving it to the U.S. government. So let's say you dollar cost average into Ethereum starting at the beginning of 2020. So assuming ETH goes to 10K, then we need to accumulate 200 ETH over the next 30 years. Uh, and that's just to break it down, 200 ETH times 10K is 2 million, right? That's just my goal. And remember, that's just for you. So if you wanna leave a legacy for your kids and grandkids, then you might need more. Again, I don't know your personal situation, uh, but these are all just rough estimates. And also, if you live longer, probably with the advancement and like anti-aging stuff, you're either gonna need more cash flow or you're gonna have to tighten your budget. Now, I think this is a real possibility based on how technology is advancing. This is a uh, great and frightening at the same time. Now, 80 might be the new 40. And if that's the case, you're gonna need way more income, which is even more of a reason to keep as much as you can and not give it away to good old Uncle Sam. And nobody wants to do that. And uh, one more thing, remember $100,000 today will not be $100,000 in 30 years, especially with all this money printing going on. So just keep that in mind. So here's your options right now. And they're called capital gains tax. And you've got essentially two flavors. You got short-term capital gains, which is anything that you make under a year. So an example is you buy Bitcoin in June, 2020 and sell it April, 2021. Uh, you bought it and sold in less than a year. That is short-term capital gains tax. And you'll be taxed based on your filing status. So if you're single and make uh, above 39,000, uh, you're going to be taxed at 22%, uh, 84,000, 24, and so on and so forth. Head of household, uh, same thing. If you make over about 52,000, 22%, 84,000, 24%, and then married, filing jointly and separately. And this is progressive. Uh, so just be, just be aware of that's how it is. Uh, and also, here's long-term capital gains tax, which is like the prettier yet still ugly sister of short-term capital gains we just saw. So this is what you can expect if you cash out after holding an asset longer than a year. So let's say that, again, you are head of household and you make $52,000. Uh, you're going to be taxed at 15%. If you make over uh, 461000 First of all, good for you. Uh, second of all, you got 20%. And then single, 39,000, 15%, 20%, and so on and so forth. So it really all depends in, in where you fall. And one more thing, these are the current numbers. Keep in mind that these capital gains taxes have been as high as 35% in the 70s. So hopefully it doesn't go back to that in the future, but who knows? Uh, we got to pay for all this money printing, right? And it really depends 
on the philosophy and direction of the government at the time and who is in charge, which is why I'm making plans right now so I don't have to deal with that uncertainty in the future. Uh, uh, also, more bad news, depending on the state you live in, you also have to pay state capital gains tax on top of the colossal taxes you just paid on the federal capital gains taxes. So lucky for me, I'm in Texas, so I got 0%, but who knows where I'm going to live later. You know, uh, I could move to Georgia. I don't know. But uh, Florida, Nevada, uh, all 0%. Washington, congratulations, New Hampshire. Uh, then you got most of the uh, Midwest and the Southeast. You're looking at four to six. And then if you live in California, ugh, uh, you got 10%. So sorry, Cali. So let's recap. We're going to need money for decades after we stop working, and we don't want to pay Uncle Sam a huge chunk of our crypto gains. So here's what I'm doing. I'm putting $6,000 worth of cryptocurrency and gold per year into a Roth IRA. Now, why $6,000 and why a Roth IRA? Because six grand is the max I can contribute every year, and with the Roth IRA, I'll never pay taxes on the gains from my crypto ever. Let me say that again. With a Roth IRA, uh, the one on the right, I'll never pay taxes on the gains from my crypto ever. So if you're thinking, well, I don't have $6,000 to contribute every year, I'm on a budget. So I want, I want you to think of it this way. If you put in $500 into Bitcoin in 2013, when it was $100 per Bitcoin, you'd be sitting on five bitcoins right now and it'd be worth fifty thousand dollars plus and probably five hundred thousand in the future if it hits 100k per bitcoin which a lot of people do predict or if you had invested five hundred dollars into ethereum in 2016 which wasn't too long ago when it was ten dollars you'd have 50 ethereum worth two hundred thousand right now and five hundred thousand dollars if ethereum hits 10k per eth the point is it doesn't matter if you contribute a little bit or the max per year. Just contribute something and get prepared for the future. Be proactive instead of reactive. Trust me on this one. And those examples I just gave was only $500 total. So imagine if you would have invested uh, or could invest a thousand 2,000 or even 6,000, which is the max every year, and what might happen in the next 20 to 30 years. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with crypto and digital assets in the future, but if history is any teacher, uh, we could see some massive gains and unfortunately, uh, some massive taxes for those who are not careful. So the question is, do you believe that what you invest in will stay flat or massively go up in value and eventually moon. I think it's going to weigh up. Uh, so here's why I'm using a cryptocurrency specific IRA that will massively minimize my taxes so I can, you know, keep more of what I earn. So let's break it down and talk about a traditional IRA, a SEP IRA, and a Roth IRA and why I picked the Roth. Again, you can do whatever you want to do, but this just made sense for me and my personal situation. So a traditional IRA, the contribution limits per year are $6,000 if you're under 49 and $7,000 if you're over 50. So that's just something to be aware of. Contribution taxes are pre-tax, meaning you put in money before the IRS taxes you on your income, which means the growth of the investment will be taxed, i.e. you save it in the beginning, but then you get crushed in the end. So do you want to be, are you, do you want to pay taxes on the $6,000 you put in per year or the millions it can potentially grow to? Now, withdrawal taxes are tax deferred growth, meaning you pay taxes when you withdraw after age 59 and a half. So whatever your crypto investments grows to means that's what you'll pay taxes on, on all of those gains. Uh, early withdrawal fee, is a 10% penalty plus a tax fee. So if you take money out before 59 and a half, be prepared for a nice kick in the teeth. And who is this good for? Well, this is good for people who need the tax break for this year's taxes or people who think uh, that their taxes will be lower in the future. An example would be someone who makes like a, a ton of money, $200,000 salary now, but when he or she retires, they won't have that job or that high salary, which will put them in a much lower tax bracket. So that is what would be good for them. So uh, additional info is this, you can do a rollover. If you have a traditional IRA, IRA somewhere, somewhere else, you can do a rollover to a cryptocurrency traditional IRA 
with no problems because they're both traditional IRAs. Now, if you want to roll over your traditional IRA to a Roth cryptocurrency IRA, it is considered a taxable event as additional income. Now, this might make sense in certain situations, but talk to the pros. Uh, okay, so we talked about the traditional IRA. Let's talk about a SEP or a simplified employee pension. And for this one, the uh, contribution limits per year are 20% of net earnings. That's pretty big, 20%. Contribution taxes are also pre-tax, which means you put in money before the IRS taxes your income. So again, the growth of the investment will be taxed. Again, do you want to be taxed on the 20% of your net earnings you put in or the millions it grows to? Withdrawal tax uh, are also tax deferred, meaning you pay taxes when you withdraw after age 59 and a half. So again, whatever your crypto grows to, you'll pay tax on it. Early withdrawal fee is again, 10% penalty plus a tax fee. So uh, again, another kick in the teeth. And this is good for small business owners and people who need the tax break for this year's taxes or people who think that their taxes will be lower in the future, like the example uh, we just talked about with the traditional IRA. Uh, again, uh, for the additional info, you can do a rollover. Uh, talk to the pros on that one and they'll set you up. Uh, but for me, I'm a heavy crypto investor. And for me, it only makes sense to open up a Roth IRA and here's why. So for a Roth, the contributions uh, limits a year are again, 6,149 or 7,000 for 50 year olds and plus. Contribution taxes are post-tax, meaning that you put in money after you get taxed on your income. This means your investments grow tax-free. So do you, again, do you wanna pay tax on the 6,000 you initially put in or the millions it will grow to? Withdrawal taxes are tax-free growth, meaning after 59 and a half, you can withdraw any amount tax-free. Uh, early withdrawal is none for contribution. So you can also uh, withdraw your contributions at any time for any reason uh, and get no type of penalty. But for the earnings it makes, you could pay taxes plus a fine or both. So if you need money for any reason, just take out the contributions that you've put in and you'll be fine. Although I wouldn't uh, recommend that. So this is uh, good for people who believe that their crypto investments are going to shoot up uh, massively over the next 20 or 30 years, like myself. Also, it's for people who think their taxes will be higher in the future, either from government interference or they'll continue to work uh, the rest of their lives, like small business owners or uh, asset owners or people who have like rental property. So uh, just so you know, this is my choice and what I believe will work best in my situation. Again, use this information to decide what works best for you and your personal situation. And uh, that's what I have to say there. So here's a little trivia. Do you know the return on investment for a IRA that invests in the usual uh, regular market stocks, bonds, CDs, etc. Uh, on average, it's a whopping six to ten percent. Let me say that again. Uh, per year, it's six to ten percent. In the traditional space, that's a huge year. That's enormous. But in crypto, we call that a Tuesday. So here's a warning: how you file your taxes will make a big difference. So for the traditional and SEP IRAs. There's no contribution limits based on income, meaning pretty much everyone can contribute up to 6000 per year. But for a Roth IRA, there are contribution limits based on income and tax filing status. So, you know, there was a catch because you know, everything, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. But uh, there's a catch, but it's not too bad. I'm going to show you why. So here's the Roth IRA modified adjusted income chart for 2019 and 20. They're pretty much the same. But if you filed as a single or head of household and make less than 122000 nothing to worry about. Above that, it gets reduced. At 137000 you can't contribute anything to the Roth IRA, but there's a way around this. Now, if you filed as married filing jointly and make less than 193,000, nothing to worry about. Above that, it gets reduced. And then at 203,000, you can't contribute to a Roth IRA at all, but there's a way around this. If you filed as married filing separately, like I do, and make less than $10,000, then you can only contribute a reduced amount or none at all, but there's a way around this. Now, the way around this is called a backdoor Roth IRA, and it gives me all the advantages of a regular IRA, uh, regardless of my income, and I'm able to contribute the max of 6,000 per year. And this little gem was passed into law by the federal government in 2010, but not too many people know about it, and uh, that's why he got me. So here's who I use for my personal Roth IRA and who I recommend to all my friends and family.
and it is I trust capital and the reason for this I went with them for three main reasons first of all was the team second was because of the fees and third is I can have an IRA of crypto and gold so let me just break it down so the team itself this is the actual website I'm gonna go to about us click down on team and this is what I always harp about uh, if you want to see a company that'll be successful look at the team because it'll just tell you exactly what you want to know. So this team that they've assembled, I believe, is kind of bringing together the old world uh, with the new. So uh, Todd and Blake here and Anthony, where do you go? Anthony down here are the kind of like leading in the cryptocurrency investments. And Rich, Tim, and Murphy. Or Rich is the, the CTO, Tim's the economist, and Murphy's the VP of operations. These guys were all part of PIMCO, which has a 1.9 trillion assets under management. So these guys managed bond trading platforms that would do 1 million trades a day. So the point is, they know how to build and operate a trading platform at a pretty high level. So that makes sense to me. Now they've also got uh, Terry down here, who's got three decades in the retirement and trust industry. You got Carol, who has five plus year in retirement alternative investments. Henry, who specializes in crypto trading, and Daniel does the UI or the user interface of the trading platform. Again, I'm a big believer in teams, and this one's pretty stacked. So just show me who the team is behind the company, and I can tell you pretty much if they're going to be successful or not. It's the same thing with businesses, same thing with cryptocurrency and digital assets, and the teams behind it. Next is the fees. So let's take a look at the fees. I just go to pricing, and here it is, 30 bucks a month. Uh, it's account fee. And then in crypto, you get a 1% trading fee. 1%? Not too bad. Gold is $50 over spot. And the one thing I liked about this is that the fees were easy to find. I mean, I looked at other places like um, Bitcoin IRA, Bitcoin, Bitcoin IRA, one of those two. And uh, I can you, it's hard to find any of, their, any of their structure. So once I called them, listened to the whole spiel, the rigmarole, I was like, no thanks. So here's the fees. And I got to tell you, for what I get, uh, I think they're undercharging me. And this is what you get for your monthly fee. So you, you get your setup of your new IRA at SunWest Trust. Facilitation of uh, transfer, rollover, contribution to fund your IRA, all necessary tax reports, unlimited storage, and institutional custody partners, and I trust platform support and maintenance. So great. And then let me let me go back to their main website because the last thing was about physical gold because I believe that the new savings account is going to be um, gold, silver, Bitcoin. So when they told me that they were actually offering gold, I was like, tell me more. And what's cool about this is that they're secured at the Royal Canadian Mint, uh, provide secure storage, global uh, in Ottawa and Winnipeg. Mint is secure. RCM weights each bullion bar upon delivery and audits the entire inventory each quarter by the Government of Canada's office of the Auditor General. So this is pretty cool. I like that. And then the other three things, because that was the top three, and then the, the, when I dug into it, I found these things which I really liked. And the big thing was that, the, is that they use Curve. So Curve is for storing digital assets. Let me take a look at their website. So Curve, you don't know, uh, they are making a big dent into the institutional grade uh, custody, and they are being buoyed by uh, these big players like eToro, Highmire Crypto, Genesis, Corbett, Swiss Borg, Bitbond, uh, Coinhouse, and Franklin Templeton Investments. And Franklin Templeton Investments, I think they have like almost a trillion assets under management. Of course, those are those are all traditional. But I mean, if you have something like this, old school like this, going in there, going, hey, we want to get in the game and we want to use Curve. So the same these same huge corporations and big entities that are using this for storage and custody you're also seeing this uh, for what you are storing it so that sounds pretty good to me okay so going back there's another big thing let me go back to the very top this was uh interesting i just thought it kind of came with it but i had to be told that no that's not true and that was about trading 24 hours a day because i mean we are in cryptocurrency right so why wouldn't be able to be able to trade 24 hours a day uh 24 7 right so i just expect it uh but when I talked to the other uh, competitors, there's only one that said that uh, they actually do allow 24 seven. The other ones, you have to call in during business hours to execute a trade over the phone. So whatever, uh, this only makes sense to me. And lastly, and then we'll wrap this up, uh, iTrust has no commission sales rep. So nobody at iTrust is on commission and they don't give out financial advice. They give options and go over the rules and regulations of the IRA. And then you make your decision, whatever's best for you and your family. That's how I came to the realization that I needed a Roth IRA. So to wrap this up, uh, you'll be able to find iTrust information in the description of every one of my videos. And the link will look like this. So lastly, let me say this. So if you go with the guys that I went with or someone else, it, it doesn't matter. Just go with, with someone, somebody. And, and take it from me, 
Times move pretty fast, and before you know it, you're old, you're looking around thinking, uh, where did all the time go? So uh, that is it uh, for what I am doing. So again, thanks for watching today's video. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure which one it is because uh, YouTube controls all that stuff. And uh, check those out. And that's it. So thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next one.